What's up, Facebook and YouTube? I got some good information for you guys today. We're going to be talking about the city of Atlantis. And this is important because a lot of modern ideologies are based around this lost city. This lost city is the foundation of a whole lot of spookism that even I myself was once a victim of. But today we're going to hopefully clear up some of the misinformation surrounding this city. At least I'm going to give a lot of my research. So let's hop right into it. So first thing first, let's deal with some popular and basic information surrounding the city of Atlantis. Atlantis is one of the most historical mysteries. A couple of years ago, the Greek philosopher Plato was the first to write about this somewhat magical island in his two books. He also describes the advanced technology that this ancient place had before it suddenly vanished in a day and a night beneath the Atlantic Ocean. So I'm guessing that's why it's called Atlantis, because it's so-called vanished in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, we can find a lot of ruins beneath the ocean that can support a lot of these claims, and I will be getting into that in a minute. This Atlantis story goes deeper than surface value. There's always a deeper story, and that's what you're going to get today. So let's deal with a lot of more information. We know there's a city called Atlanta that's also named after this lost city. And if you look at a map and you look at some of the locations, because one thing that most people don't realize is that Atlantis is not said to exist in one particular place on Earth. There are many, many places that people are saying, this is Atlantis, this is Atlantis. This is what most of the conscious communities aren't aware of about this lost city. There's not just one particular location, and there's not just one claim for this lost city. And you're going to see what I'm talking about here in a minute. But basically, if you look at one of the locations for the lost city of Atlantis, you can see it's not far from the city of Atlanta. If you're dealing with map distances, but that's just something I wanted to point out dealing with the name of Atlantis itself. And also just to throw out there, Atlantis also originates from Greek mythology and it is associated with the Greek god Neptune and many others. And I will be getting into that in a whole nother video when I get into the god Neptune. Because Neptune is really the Greek patriarch version of the mother goddess Kali. Even if you look at the planet Neptune that's associated with this deity, it's the exact same color blue that's associated with the mother goddess Kali. I mean, these two blues are identical. And this is not by accident. Also kind of similar to Jay-Z blue for all of you rappers out there. Now, we know that this god Neptune carries the trident just like Kali. And again, the color associated with this god is the color of the mother goddess. Blue is a very holy color because it's dealing with water. And when you research about the god Neptune, that's one of his attributes. He's the god of water and the seas. These seas are talking about the oceans of the earth, but there are more seas that's associated with the goddess Kali and this patriarch form of the mother goddess, which is Neptune. And those are the primordial waters of Nu. And I've spoke about these waters in plenty previous videos. These are the primordial waters by which all things were birthed from the mother goddess. And this cosmology is represented in Neptune, and I'll get into that in a future video, this ties into the city of Atlantis. And how it ties into Atlantis is simply because a lot of the temples of the so-called lost city is made in honor of this Greek patriarch deity Neptune, again, which is blasphemy. It's plagiarization. It's another form of the mother goddess Kali. There's a lot to this city. And remember, as I told you in previous videos, that the mother goddess Kali represents the cosmology. And a lot of this cosmology was tied up in two previous videos that I just did on Anchor Wat as well. So all of these previous videos is going to tie in. This Atlantis video is sort of the climax to all of that research. So you're going to be able to see very clearly what I'm saying in this video if you've been following me. So just a little bit of the mythology that's associated with Atlantis to give you guys a 
deeper understanding of what I mean about the grand deception. If you look at the world religions, how they control most of the world with all of these religions, and when you start researching about these deities, you realize that most of them originated from Greek deities or Greek mythology. All of your deities are nothing but copies of ancient Greek mythological deities, ladies and gentlemen. Every last one of them. And these are male patriarch deities that has been forced on the planet over time. And these deities ensure that chaos rules upon the planet. Because again, I told you that when the goddesses rule in our religion, in our psyche, when the goddesses was in the mind of the people on the planet, there was balance. The goddesses were linked to nature. The male deities that we get today go against nature. They promise to destroy nature in the lakes of fires and things of that nature. Basically, what I'm saying here is that, for example, Jesus is Jesus. He's a copy of the mythological god Zeus. And there are so many more. So what am I bringing all that up to say? That none of these deities literally existed. Understand that these deities are associated with mythological places that they dwell in. So when you establish these mythological deities, what comes along with them is mythological stories that centered in mythological locations. Atlantis was one of those mythological locations. Now, this is going to break a lot of people's heart, especially in the comedic community, especially in these communities that's flooded with misinformation about us evolving from fishmen and mermaids and nomos and dagons and all of these stories where Europeans went and corrupted Dogon cosmology. Now, if you want to learn more about the truth about Dogon cosmology, you can get the truth on this channel. I already put in a lot of work on that subject. So the work is there. Just check it out. Moving on with Atlantis, what I'm really trying to get in you guys head here is that this is a mythological place that has been supported as fact by ruins that we find under the ocean. And remember what I told you, there's not one location of an Atlantis sighting on this earth. There are multiple ones and we're going to explore some here in the future. So what does this tell us? That random ruins under the ocean is supporting a mythological city. The city of Atlantis does not exist. I repeat, it does not exist. And it has been supported on ruins that can be the remains of cities that we are yet to learn about. These cities that we find under the ocean have a lot of cosmology that goes back to these original cultures that practice ma'at and balance in nature and the teachings of the mother goddess. When these European scientists go under the ocean and find these remains, instead of them telling the world the truth about who and what these cultures are, because there were so many cultures we lost, they attribute all of these or most of all of these ancient remains they're finding under the water to the lost city of Atlantis, which empowers Greek mythology. Take a minute to ponder deeply on what I just said because I'm going to try not to repeat myself so much in this video. We are not getting the real history. There are so many other cultures that practice this cosmology that I've been revealing to you guys on this channel. And they are finding all of these underground cities and all over the world, everyone is saying the lost city of Atlantis. This is why it's not a fact. And it's only in Hollywood, in sci-fi, pseudoscience, and mythology. Remember, it originated in Greek mythology, and it's centered around a Greek god, Neptune. That alone ought to make us question it and realize that it's baloney, just like everything else we've done away with thus far. So on this channel, we're going to be doing away with a lot of nonsense that got us bound and stuck to lies. And these lies hide the truth. But behind these lies is the mother. And that's what I'm revealing on this channel. As we move on, you're going to see that's exactly what I'm going to do here. We still just get some basics on this lost city. So understand that this city 
and the way we come to know of the city of Atlantis is all mythology that was given to us by the Greek engineer Plato. Understand that Plato is a deceiver. He's just an ancient Stephen Hawking or Neil deGrasse Tyson. All of these guys, they put on a pedestal, you know, put in their educational hall of fames and all of their astronomers they give us. These guys are just liars and thieves who knew nothing. And you really don't have to be a smart man to know the secrets of this cosmos. All of the ancients knew it, even the children. These are people who stole ancient sciences, hid them from the masses and created peasants. Only thing that made peasants in the ancient world was the hiding of the knowledge and knowledge is power. Where the knowledge is hidden, the people become powerless. And that's the same situation we are in today. The big illusion is things like races, things like evolution, things even like dinosaurs, things like space, things like the universe you've come to know as real. If you remember the clip from the movie Matrix, Morpheus played a scene. And in that scene, he basically showed Neo the real world as opposed to the one that was in front of his eyes, the one that he was programmed to see. Ever since you was a child, you've been programmed and taught what to see. And Atlantis played a key role in that programming as we grew up and started to absorb a lot of information or misinformation, I must say, in this crooked society. But now let's move on. And just for those still skeptical about Plato, you know, we got a lot of people that's just so loyal to these deceivers. Plato was the only person who have any records of this city. That alone ought to tell us something. This huge city and only this one person has the most information surrounding the city and its origins. Come on, guys. Do we really trust this? This is what I call controlled information. If you can only have one person as a witness, then you have no argument in the court. So this is how they always deceive us. This is a way they control history or alternate history. Sometimes I even wonder if people like Plato and Aristotle even existed. But that's a whole nother story. Basically, what I wanted to point out with all of this was that Plato is responsible for this mythological city called Atlantis. And the agenda behind the whole thing is to support Greek mythology. Greek mythology is what hides the magic of Earth. So you will notice whether you're a religious person or so-called conscious person in some of these pseudoscience conscious communities, at the root of everybody's philosophy is spookism. For example, the religious people will tell you we come from a man's rib or we come from a ball of nothingness that exploded. So-called conscious people in these communities will tell you that we come from fish people and all type of stuff that just don't quite sit right. And at the end of the day, there's no real facts to support anything other than we come from nature. Now, how we come from nature is what we need to be asking. How did we actually originate from nature? A lot of these questions can be answered in ancient cosmology and that's the importance of me going into the whole Plato story and Greek mythology just to show you that the origins of humanity, the origins of basically everything is hidden in matriarch or ancient cosmology that you will never get to because your research will lead you into Greek mythology. And most people never make it out of Greek mythology. There are so many steps to making it out of this matrix but the key to making it all the way out is to never stop questioning. And that's what happened. Really, there shouldn't even be any communities. Just the fact that we got different communities proves that we reach a point where the knowledge stops and we say, hey, I got it. This is how it all happened. This is the story. And it also becomes a cult. And I'm going to be doing future videos exposing a lot of cults. Stay tuned for that. So. It's an ongoing journey, and that's what will always lead us out of each of the snares of this matrix, and it seems endless at times. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. I'm going to show you guys some symbolism about Atlantis that's going to give you a divine revelation and bring to light the things that I'm saying.
in dealing with some more of the mythology surrounding this fictional island, because that's exactly what it is. Atlantis is a fictional island mentioned within an allegory on the hubris of nations in Plato's works Timaeus and Critias, where it represents the antagonist naval power that besieges ancient Athens, the pseudo-historic embodiment of Plato's ideal state. And you can research on the Republic to see more of this. So this is all mythology, and some of it is centered around Roman history. We know a lot of Roman history was embodied into Greek mythology. This is how certain emperors and certain Caesars become deified, and then they become mythological figures, and vice versa. It's all tied into the same agenda, and it's the same rhetoric in different forms. Control is done on so many angles. So what we find is that even though religion is a form of history, it's not in the historical fact section. So what we find is we have a dual history in the world. And this is how they rule. You don't have facts. You have arguments and theories, beliefs and mythology. You have one history from the church, one history from the school, one history from pseudoscience and evolution. And the truth lies in nature at the end of the day. So to move on with this mythological city, basically what you need to realize is that there is no Atlantis. The underwater remains all around the world that they have been using to support this mythological city. It's all baloney. So what is this picture you're looking at of Atlantis? It's actually the city of Angkor Wat. It's actually the flat earth cosmos. It's actually the cosmos. And again, Angkor Wat is built just like our cosmos. And if you look at the city of Atlantis, it's the same thing of Angkor Wat. It's the same thing as the ancient cosmology. We're going to get deep into this cosmology and this association as we move on. Now, let's deal with a little bit of etymology. When we say Atlantis, we're dealing with the ATL or the ATLA, A-T-L-A, ATLA root. And when we talk about Atlantis, we're talking also about Atlas. Now, an Atlas is a historical map. It's actually a flattened globe map, for lack of better words, in a simple way. We could just put it that way. It's the globe flattened out. And this shares a similarity to the flat earth or the ancient cosmology map. And we understand that over time we were bamboozled into accepting the globe. And it's maps like this that just show you the ancient flat earth remnants. What we must understand is that all of this stuff shows a connection for a reason. When we say Atlas and an Atlas being a flat map, that's for a reason. And when we say Atlantis... It's been a city that's really based on a flat earth cosmology or the ancient cosmology, just like Angkor Wat. Once you understand that the earth is flat and you understand ancient cosmology, everything they put in front of your face to deceive you, it won't work, y'all, because the cosmology holds the secrets that they know. And when you know what they know, they can't fool you with the deception. So when they put pictures like this of Atlantis up there and got everybody at the theater believing in this mythological city, got comedic people actually taking it serious, talking about they Atlanteans and that they Nomos and Dagon people. A person who understand our true cosmology will look at this painted city that they got everybody believing because that's what it is. It's an illustration. It's a painting that they got everybody believing. See, we'll look at this and we'll compare it to this ancient cosmology right here and we'll say, aha, again, it all goes back to the cosmology like I keep telling y'all. When you see the cosmology, they can't fool you. Now, let's move on. Atlanta, Atlantis, and Atlas, they all are related for a reason and I'm going to break that down a little bit for you right now. Now, Atlas is a Greek god. Keep that in mind. If I'm not mistaken, Atlas gave birth to Neptune or either Neptune gave birth to Atlas. You guys can do your research on that. I'm bringing up the mythology because that's what it is, a mythological city. But I'm going to show you the reality of what they are copying and show you the reality of it here in a minute. 
as it relates to our real cosmos. But we got to deal with this etymology that's tied up into the mythology. So remember, Atlas is a Greek mythological deity and it's also a flat map. Remember that Atlas is related to Neptune and that the city of Atlantis is dedicated to Neptune. Atlantic Ocean means Sea of Atlas, while Atlantis means Island of Atlas. The wife of Poseidon had 10 sons. Each son ruled a part of Atlantis. So think about what I told y'all previously when I dealt with the Angkor Wat cosmology and I dealt with the Hindu cosmology. Think about all of those videos when I taught y'all about the 10-pointed Kananga and how our cosmos is really a 10-pointed star. The best way to explain it is the compass. If you look at the compass and all compasses point upwards or northward toward the source, this compass is 10 pointed. And understand that these 10 suns that Poseidon had is a form of those 10 points in our cosmos. It's a form of those 10 points that I described to y'all in the previous video. They even say in the Greek mythology that these 10 suns were five sets of twins. And that go back to the dices, what I was telling y'all about the number seven on a dice is really two times five equaling 10. Why is 10 so important in this mythological story? Remember, because 10 is the binary code and 10 is Zen. And I'm not gonna beat that horse in this video. This is gonna be strictly about Atlantis. You can research the previous videos if you wanna go deep into that. So each sun ruled the part of Atlantis. That that's each point on that Kananga. This same cosmology that I've been breaking down to you guys on this channel, I'm basically showing you how it tie into Atlantis at this time. So let's get some more of the mythology so that more truth may be revealed. So another reason we're dealing with this etymology because we're going to get a lot of revelations from it. Now this god Atlas is where Atlantis gets its name from. Remember that this lost, mysterious, mythological city is dedicated to Neptune. Remember that Neptune and Atlas are related in mythology. With all of this being said, what do I mean about how deep the plagiarization go? Now, I've been showing y'all all of the mother goddess information on this channel. Been giving you guys the ancient truth. And it's important to see how it's been hidden behind the patriarchy and behind the liars. If you know anything about this god Atlas that they named this city Atlantis after, you would realize that Atlas is also another water god and he is responsible for holding up the earth or basically put it this way. All of the attributes and responsibilities that I've been teaching y'all that belong to the mother goddess, these attributes they gave to Atlas. Atlas has all the attributes of the mother goddess and this city is named after this patriarchal deity. Like I told you guys, they will never lead you back to the mother. So if you notice all of the pictures I've been showing y'all with the mother, she come with her arms raised, symbolizing life and death. Her powers over life and death, those transitional powers. Those hands raised also signify how the mother hold up the foundations of the earth and how she feeds the earth through the umbilical cord of the North Pole. We know that the queen bee resides at the center of the heart of the hive and she feeds the hive with life. As above, so below. I've been breaking this down to you guys on this channel. Now, I brought all of that up to say that the picture you're looking at in front of you is just a blasphemous plagiarization of those concepts here is atlas holding up the globe now i just told you atlas is a flat map here is atlas here holding up the globe with his hands raised high in the l even position holding up the foundations just as the mother goddess so i just wanted to point that out to you a lot of symbolism that's associated with atlas such as this red and black shield you see here goes right back to the bee goddess i explained to you guys that the coat of arms the shield and all of these things are the bee goddess even the nfl logo and i'm gonna be doing future videos getting more into the symbolism so as you can see 
all of the symbolism associated with Atlas goes right back to the original mother goddess, the primordial waters of Nu, the original source. This mythological city is named after Atlas, who is related to Neptune, and Neptune is nothing but the mother goddess Kali. He carries the trident, and the color that's attributed to this patriarchal god is the exact same color that's attributed to the goddess Kali. We have to open up our eyes and realize that the feminine principle has been hidden because the secrets of nature lies in the feminine principles. The women were the gardeners. They was the ones dealing with the plants. They was the ones more connected with the earth. Again, it's called mother nature. So if at the root of all our ideology is a patriarchal mindset, not that there's nothing wrong with male royalty or male power, but when we talk about the most high or the source, we must always go back to the life bringing role. And nature has always shown us the woman. So when we deal with a lot of this ancient history, ancient cosmology, we have to bring things like this up. And this is another reason why the Madonna and child is so important to the Vatican. The matriarchal aspect to nature, to our existence is very important. And you have to deal with it when you're dealing with ancient sciences. People that's not dealing with that aspect of it is really not dealing with the science. OK, so now that we have an idea of Atlas and the etymology of Atlantis and how it relates to the Atlantic Ocean, we can move on. And now we can look at some more of these slides so I can show you all some more of the deception and how these mythological places that don't exist are real in the minds of some people. And we base whole philosophies and communities and ideologies off of these beliefs and myths. This is no different than the world religions, my brothers and sisters. We think that these stories and this knowledge come from the ancients, but it doesn't. All you have to do is research. Now let's move on and I'm going to show you why. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run through a lot of slides that's going to drive my message home and paint this picture more deeply into you guys' mind. So what you're looking at in front of you now is a depiction of the city of Atlantis. And what I want to point out about this depiction, this is what we get a lot of little similar depictions of Atlantis. And they're always very identical. The layout never changes. And as I move on, you're going to see what I mean. So let's pay attention to this little computerized depiction of Atlantis. And only thing I want to point out on this is the legs that are extending from the center peak. We have six legs extending from this center peak. All right. You can't see the other two that's on the top left corner over there because they're hidden by the center peak. This is kind of the same phenomena I went over in a previous video on Anchor Watt. But basically what I want to point out with this picture is that there are six legs extending from one center peak. Keep this concept in your head, guys. Six legs or six points extending from a center peak. All right. This is what they give us for the lost city of Atlantis. Keep this concept in your head. Now we're going to switch over to the Hindu cosmos. And as you can see here, you have six deities surrounding this center peak on this cosmology. The deity that you see in the middle of the circle in the middle of the square is represented as Mount Maru. And that is the zenith of this cosmology. What you are looking at in this Hindu cosmology would be equivalent of looking at a pyramid from a top view. So that deity in the middle represents the peak. And as you can see, you have six deities that surrounds this cosmology. And the reason they are there is because these are the points that that center peak creates. And I'm not going to go into this concept deep because I really went into it a long time on the previous videos that I did on Anchor Watt. So check those out to understand this whole Hindu cosmology that you're looking at right now. I broke this thing down. So check it out, guys. But on this one, I just want to point out its relation and similarity to what they give us for Atlantis. So y'all can see that we been bamboozled. Think about it. Let's go back to our Atlantis picture they give us. It's six points that are emanating from one center peak. And that's what we have in this Hindu cosmology. 
those people who created that Atlantis depiction did not create that concept. They stole it, y'all. It's a very old concept. And again, I broke it down previously, so check it out. This is stolen stuff, y'all. And as I go into it more, you're going to see this. So that's one down. We got plenty more to go. So now what we are looking at is underwater pyramids off the coast of Cuba. Why am I pointing this out? Because one of the locations for Atlantis is around the Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico area, kind of. They have a location there for Atlantis. And there's historical remains under the water there that they're claiming are Atlantis. And here we have off the coast of Cuba pyramids that resemble Angkor Wat. And these things are under the water and these people are saying this is the lost city of Atlantis. How can this city be in two different geographic places at one time? I don't know. Perhaps they would tell you that some of these stones or monuments floated with the ocean current. And I guess that would also describe why they are perfectly aligned in sacred geometrical patterns. Also, I guess the ocean set them up that way as well. The truth is that a lot of land... Over time, the ocean has risen to claim. There have been phenomena where there have been many cities go underwater in many natural ways. What happens is in our day, they go and find these remains on the water. And instead of them telling us the truth, they use this stuff to support their Greek mythology and to strengthen their modern lies that they rule us with. And until we understand that and get out of spookism and quit readily accepting things that's so popular and so normal like Atlantis and Stargate theories that they constantly try to shove down our throat. Why do we eat what they give us? If they are our enemy, something would tell us that what they are feeding us would be poison. But what happens is out of ego, when we think we're right about something for so long, even though we were bamboozled by the elite, we just can't help being wrong. So we never correct ourselves. We willingly be deceived by the elite just so we don't look wrong to our brothers and sisters. And this is what perpetuates the madness. This is what keeps the world in lockdown. The earth is not what you think it is. This earth is a sanctuary that's very magical. Now, these pictures we looking at, like I said, these three pyramids were found off the coast of Cuba. And they're trying to use this to strengthen their mythologies. But we're not going to be deceived. Now, if you look at these three pyramids, they are aligned in the same way that we see at the entrance of Angkor Wat. Now, let's flip back over to Angkor Wat. Here are the three peaks at the entrance of Angkor Wat. You will see these three peaks no matter what side or what direction you enter the city from. Because that center peak counts as a multiple headed peak. That's why it's not bound to any of the four corners. If you look at the top of Angkor Wat, it's made like a five dice. And that center peak emanates energy through the whole structure. And this is symbolic. No matter what direction you walk into the city on, you see a trinity. And this is sacred geometry. This is very powerful stuff, guys. Now, this goes back to what we see underwater here off the coast of Cuba. This proves that all around the world, Everybody was on the same page and something happened. And now we're all bickering with all of these different male deities and my God better than your God. No one knows the simple code of nature. We destroyed the planet while arguing about whose God is better. Curse the earth and curse our bodies because these foolish religions tell us we born sinners. They tell us we're nobody. They tell us that we're so filthy. And I just don't get how you can have a child and teach this message to a child and expect to have a healthy human being with self-esteem. The root of most of the world problems today is our foolish ideologies and this word that's called tradition which goes against truth we got to quit believing all of these lies we have been believing for all of these generations if we want liberation now what we see found off the coast of cuba here is the same architecture and the same geometric layout as all of the other ancestors and when we compare this to anchor Wat, we can see a very very close similarity but as we move on and reveal some more of this deception you guys will see more and more what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and move on some more. And as you can see, those three peaks again here 
are shown in the Cambodian flag. So the people of Cambodia are very proud of this sacred geometry, of this architecture, of this cosmology and this matriarchal science that's associated with their ancestors, our ancestors. Why are we being lied to? Because all around the world, people are practicing ancient sciences and spirituality, and they are outliving Americans. Their IQ is higher than Americans. Over here in America, we say things like, how do I activate my pineal gland and how do I open my third eye? In other countries, the babies come out of the womb with their third eyes ready to go. Because they've been practicing this stuff for so long. They don't have a culture that goes against nature. Now, most of the world is corrupted. And most of the world governments are creating zombies that they are calling citizens, just like us. But in very rare places and remote places that haven't been tampered with, like the Senegalese people, you have the Bushmen and a lot of different people that still keep these natural practices. And you can see that they outlive us and that they are able to do things we are not able to do. There was actually a tribe found in Africa that was regenerating their limbs. You can research this yourself. There's a lot of tribes and cultures that are mysterious and scientists are hiding so much from us about this planet and about who we are. So we can see here in this picture the goddess with her hands raised, and this is Dogon art. I've showed this picture to you guys plenty of times, so I don't want to spend too much time on it, other than to show you that the hands raised here and to compare it with Atlas, because the city of Atlantis is named after the god Atlas, who is known, and he's popular in Greek mythology for having his arms raised. And the reason his arms is raised is because he has been given the attribute to hold up the earth, basically to hold up the foundations. And these are the same attributes given to all of the mother goddesses, as well as the transitional powers of life and death. As you can see on this Dogon art here, the figure eight serpents on either side of the mother representing these concepts. And I really just wanted to compare her positioning with her arms to Atlas, the same concepts. And I am just want to point out this plagiarization. We also know that the mother goddess is known for carrying a trident. And here in this picture, we can see that this is from a video game. And I basically just got this picture off of the video game to show you guys how even the people who create the video games know the history. But you guys don't. We go to restaurants that have an Atlantis theme and we eat and we don't ask questions. We never ask, hey, what is Neptune doing with the fishtail and a trident? Because all of the matriarch mother goddess cosmology is hidden behind this stupid patriarch deity. Now, the people who created this video game know that this trident goes back to the mother goddess Kali. The color that's associated with Neptune and his planet goes back to the mother goddess's color. This color blue is a form of deification. We see it all over India. Nothing is by mistake. They chose this color for a reason for this deity. It's plagiarization. And his lower body being the fishtail goes back to the primordial waters of Nu. The original mother goddesses who was associated with these primordial waters, they had the fish bottom because fishes are associated with water. Plain and simple. Our ancestors understood that the first thing in creation was the primordial waters, just like the egg in the fetal sac as above, so below, that the original mother goddesses, the original source of all, was a primordial ocean. This was the waters that broke, just like the waters break today. The cosmic womb, the mother goddess, when she gave birth to the cosmic egg, those first primordial waters are symbolic to the waters breaking during pregnancy. The attributes to those original mother goddesses, when they were personified, they were given a fish tail. This became to be a serpent tail or Nagini tail in certain cultures, what they call serpent people. They also call fish people. These people are equivalent. These are not literal people that walked around with fish tails and serpent tails, but these are concepts. This is what happens when we, for example, a Christian dies and we give them a halo. 
Well, this is the same concept. Our ancestors understood the ancient sciences of the mother goddess. They practiced the laws of nature, the laws of Ma'at. And again, they deified those original mother goddesses who was related to those primordial waters with fish tails or serpent tails. And we begin to take this literal today. But the goddesses had those attributes because of the water. They were turned into mermaids and they were given these attributes. Just like the original mother goddess is a very, you would call her an obese lady today. When I show you this mother goddess with these curves, she looked like a figure eight. And that's exactly what our ancestors were trying to do when they created this beautiful goddess. We know that we will never find no one walking around built like this with two circles like a figure eight. It's all mythology. It's personification. It's to tell a story. These type of deities speak to the subconscious because they hold the message in their shape and their design. So when I look at the mother goddess, I see infinity. I see the figure eight. I see so many things all in her shape. And this is the ancient art of sigil making, hieroglyph creating and all of that. And I got future videos where I'm going to be teaching you guys this ancient science and teaching you how to work with sigils and glyphs to create them on your own to manifest things in your life. Symbolism is very deep. It goes right to the subconscious and the subconscious is where we manifest so this is very deep when we see these deities with these items holding the trident with the color blue and the fish tail. Pay attention to all of that. None of it is by accident. They're speaking to your subconscious and they're hiding the truth of the mother behind these silly looking patriarch deities. It gets very frustrating because they took the woman off the throne and there's so much ego in these conscious communities as a result of this patriarchal mindset. What you're looking at now is what's called the Neptune Memorial. And this Neptune Memorial, of course, has been associated with this mythological city called Atlantis. When this city under the water here can be any city. There were so many cities we don't know about today. And they are calling all of these cities Atlantis to hide all of these cultures that they are finding. And all of these cultures have the same cosmology and the same spirituality. So they're going to attribute all of these different cultures to one mythological city that's described by this deceiver called Plato. And they're going to give all of this credit to their bogus city, Atlantis, instead of telling us who these people were. Because if they tell us the truth that all of these cultures they're finding under the water were different people who had the same story, just like I've been telling y'all with all of the other cultures around the world, you will see how divided we are today and how they've been ruling us by distorting history. So this is a Neptune memorial. They attribute to their patriarchal god, Neptune. But you can see that this is the same architecture that's found in Angkor Wat. You can see it's the same architecture found in South America and how the Mayans built I don't even have to dwell on this image for long for us to see that this is a simple pyramid that we find all over Angkor Wat. This style of architecture derives from the bee goddess and the beehive. The steps are representative of the stripes on the beehive. And this whole type architecture that we find around Angkor Wat and in these underwater cities that they're attributing to their Atlantis deception, this same concept, this same design, we find in the bee goddess art, a lot of our ancient ancestors who revered the bee goddess, they built a lot of objects and structures this way in her honor. She wore this hive on top of her head. And that's another concept of, like I told you, the mother goddess holds up the foundations. She holds up the cosmos. This was corrupted in religion and Christianity in particular, where you have songs like, he have the whole world in his hand. So we heard these songs, but the truth is that he has nothing in his hand. We are at the mercy of Mother Nature. And the mother all throughout ancient cosmology has been shown to hold up the cosmos. So she has the whole cosmos in her hand. This goes back to your Atlas concept. Pointed this out to show you that this Neptune memorial they are. Finding these underwater structures that were really dedicated to the mother goddess and the bee goddess. And in our time, they are 
plagiarizing history, rewriting it, telling us that this is now the Neptune Memorial. So now we give power to their deity instead of the ancient truth and of the mother goddess. So now we got to move on. And if you look at this picture, this is a Mayan cosmos. And you can see at the center of this cosmos would be what we just call the Neptune Memorial. And I basically pointed out this Mayan cosmos just to show you this Neptune Memorial. They are finding these underwater structures and giving the credit to Neptune. There were so many cultures, guys, and all over the world and even cultures they haven't found in the bushes yet that are still practicing this cosmology. Here in this Mayan cosmos, you can see the same structure that they attributed to Neptune that they found underwater and attributed to their mythological city Atlantis. We can see this same structure here in the Mayan cosmos way in South America. So is it really the Neptune memorial? So I guess the Mayans was also giving praise to Neptune. It makes no sense at all. The Mayans did not give credit to Neptune. This is plagiarization. The people who are giving credit to Neptune are using ancient Mayan architecture and ancient structures and ancient architecture that our ancestors used to revere the mother goddess. And now we are taught that these things are to memorialize Greek mythology and Greek deities. This is where the deception lies and this is where the truth is being hidden. So as we move on, we're going to shed some more light on this. Now, this is another underwater structure found, and this has been attributed to the city of Atlantis. This is the cow goddess Hathor. I will not touch on this cow goddess on this video because, listen, this is one goddess that I speak so much about in previous videos. I don't want to waste our time. We all should be familiar with Hathor, the cow goddess. She's another original mother goddess. She have the same attributes as Sekhmet, the same attributes as the sky goddess Nut of the bee goddess of the original mother goddesses. She's associated with the moon. We know that a lot of our goddesses are associated with the moon. I went into that in previous videos. I'm basically pointing this picture out to show you that all of these underwater cities they are finding. Our ancient ancestors were saying the same thing no matter where they go. Here is the cow goddess Hathor under the water. I don't know exact which Atlantis location this is, but this is very good stuff. This shows that everywhere we look, all of the ancients was on the same page, not only with the cosmology, but with the deities in most cases. And where the deities vary, the concepts of the deity was always the same. So where you didn't have Hathor, you would have another deity with the same concepts as Hathor because the deities were personifications of the cosmology. And since everyone had the same cosmology, all of the deities were synonymous or very similar. So here we see the cow goddess Hathor. And again, they would use all of this to strengthen their mythological lies. But I'm telling you guys where this cow goddess originates from in our ancient world. And it has nothing to do with this city called Atlantis. Just by you saying the word Atlantis, you are giving power to Greek mythology. This is why it baffles me how a lot of black comedic people can have such a clinging towards Atlantis. This is because there are two forms of information. One is pseudoscience and spookism. One is ancient truth. Most of our comedic communities are in spookism mythology. They're dealing with stargates and lost cities that they're never going to find. And they trust to point fingers at the Christians looking for lost arcs that they're never going to find. Of course, they're not going to find the lost ark because I told you what the Ark of the Covenant is. It's the Arch of Nut and the Sky Goddess. It's the firmament. Of course, they'll never find it, but they'll keep looking out of their belief and their ignorance, just like comedic people would keep looking for Atlantis out of their belief and their ignorance. See, you get in these conscious communities and you think you've come so far from religion and you realize you're in the same trap. So the people who really make it out like me are the ones who never stop questioning. Here you can see underwater here the cow goddess Hathor 
and the horns on her head later became the pharaoh's hat that you see that shaped in the form of a beehive or a bee churn. I don't know the name of it. We see these same bee basket type shape for a lot of the peaks and, and a lot of the architecture in Angkor Wat. The arch is very important. And when we talk about the bull horns here that you see here, it goes back to this ancient headdress. Instead of the horns, it became this little churn bee hat. And a lot of cultures, they still wear the horns as a form of reverence. So horns are holy. Horns are the equivalent of the halo used in Christianity. We don't want to get too far off subject. So we're going to get back to the slides. Here we have another depiction of the lost city of Atlantis. And I really don't have to speak on this one. This is a beautiful drawing or a beautiful computerized picture. Nice illustration. However, it's mythology. We use the myth to decode the truth within it. But we don't accept the myth for face value. Okay, people? Now, with that being said, anybody that's been following me don't have to look at this nothing but one or two seconds to already know what I'm going to say. This is nothing but the flat earth planetarium, the ancient cosmology. And this is the same thing they're giving us for the lost city of Atlantis in these movies because they know most of the world don't know that the earth is flat. They know most of the planet they have bamboozled at this point. We don't realize that we are indeed living in a planetarium or what's called a terrarium by some. So what you see here in this picture is literally your reality. Now, to strengthen their Greek mythology, they've given you this picture associated with Atlantis. And this picture resonates with you because this is your true reality. Even though you think you are on a globe, this resonates with you. The truth resonates with the spirit, with the soul. Truth is the food of the soul. So when you see this in the movies, it gives a feeling to your soul like, look at that. Isn't it beautiful? Especially if you got the 3D glasses on and you're into the movie. You really think you're swimming around this beautiful little fairy land. When in reality, this is our world that we have corrupted. This is the world we can live in. A beautiful terrarium where trees grow all the way up to the sky and out of the top of the heavens. This was earth, y'all. Trees used to be huge trees used to be the size of mountains what we call forests and big trees today are just bushes and i put a link in the description there are no forests on flat earth and i beg you guys to watch the video the guy's voice may be bothering if you can't quite understand his accent that's fine watch it anyway the pictures will resonate with you you will understand it Please watch that video. He touches on a lot of things that I touch on and he goes even deeper showing you the magic of Earth. Now we have to move on here. I just wanted you to see this depiction of Atlantis and show you how they're playing with us. This is no different than this Mayan cosmos here. It's no different than all of these other ancient cosmologies that I've been showing you guys. But here someone would see this with their comedic mind and they think they're so smart. And they would say how we come from Sirius star system and give you all of these nomos fish men stories. And that spookism, this planetarium design, this cosmology have so many beautiful creation stories associated with it. When you start studying the different cosmologies, one of those creation stories is the turtle myth. In the story, there's a turtle and four elephants. And in this story, our ancient ancestors tell the creation story of the cosmos. Do your research on that and get into that. I don't have time to dwell on it here. Basically, if you look at a turtle walking on four legs and it's shaped, it's the equivalent of the earth in its planetarium standing upon the four foundations. This is the same concept. And here in this picture, because we're keeping in mind with that depiction we just saw that they give us in Hollywood of this Atlantis as a planetarium. They're really giving you the entire cosmos that we live in. And here on the wall, we can see this turtle carved in the wall. And this is for a reason. The ancients carved these turtles in the wall for the reason that I just briefly described. 
It's related to the cosmological story. And I'm pointing this turtle out. And what I want to do is move on to another picture of Atlantis. Here is another picture of Atlantis. And you can see in the background there is some of the architecture associated with the city. And again, we see this planetarium, this temple-like design. If you look at the bottom right of this picture, you see a little icon that say UFO and aliens documentary. Documentary. Ignore that. I just get the picture from this company. But again, they use all of this stuff to support spookism and Greek mythology. So here's a, ch a channel that promotes UFOs and all of the modern spookism, all of the lies they want us to support the fakeness of outer space and these dumb planets that don't exist in the way that NASA teaches us. You know nothing about your reality. I'm trying to give us back the ancient truth, but you must discard all of the modern lies in order to get the ancient truth. All right. So again, in this picture, you see the planetarium architecture there just like we saw in the previous depiction of atlantis and now we're going to look at this picture here of the hindu cosmos this is another form of the hindu cosmos as it relates to the turtle myth and if you read about vishnu he's associated with the turtle it goes into the mario game while mario was associated with the turtle a lot of the symbolism that's dealing with this cosmology, a lot of it is in the Mario game. And I have a whole video on the Mario game that you guys can watch. So find it in my video section. And it's a great video. It shows how they took a lot of this symbolism and put it into the Mario game. So check that one out. It also deals with the mushroom mythology and the toadstools. You guys would enjoy that video. So I recommend it. Back to this picture in front of you. This all has a lot to do with the ancient turtle creation. It's a beautiful story that describes the creation of our cosmos and explains the actual structure, as you can see in the picture. And you can see that they say at the bottom here, because I'm just skipping around, it says some say the turtle was swimming in a primordial ocean. This goes back to those primordial waters of new that all of the ancients speak about. And it goes back to the mother goddess. It goes back to the cosmic womb. Earth is a cosmic egg. Think of pregnancy and how it takes place and think as above, so below. And a lot of your questions about the cosmos will be answered. So as you can see, even in this turtle creation, they speak of the primordial waters or the primordial ocean. And you guys can feel free to do further research on that on your own. I just wanted to compare this turtle picture in front of you to these planetariums that they are giving us of Atlantis. It's the same thing. Again, it's plagiarization. This turtle cosmology became these depictions that they give us for this mythological city of Atlantis. We accept this city and it strengthened the elite's lies. All of their evolution lies and their bogus theories are founded on mythology. The mythology becomes accepted as fact when we fail to do this research. So many people may say, I don't believe in the Greek god Neptune. But these same so-called conscious people that are make that statement will say they believe in the city of Atlantis. And they will start bringing up Atlantean concepts such as mermaid people and reptilians and crap like that. What they don't realize is by believing in those things, they believe in the Greek god Neptune because all of these things are associated with Neptune. They wouldn't exist without Neptune. For example, the city of Atlantis is a mythological city because it was created for a mythological deity. Just as if I wrote a story and created a fake character, I would have to create a fake city or a fake setting for that character to exist in this is what happened in greek mythology and they end up making their mythology into facts and reality by using ancient ruins and ancient structures that has nothing to do with greek mythology and they name it out the greek deities so just like i showed you the neptune memorial which has nothing to do with neptune when our ancients made it they would call it that and people would throw this name around in conscious communities and Neptune would get the power. 
Greek mythology would now be brought to light and looked upon as questionable. Hey, was Greek mythology real or was it not? We all know it was fake, but they will make you question it and think it's real because they're associating it with real monuments. They're not telling you the truth about these cultures that they are finding all of these architecture and monuments from. They are not telling us who these people were. They are saying Atlantis. And when you research Atlantis, it always leads you back to Greek mythology. It never leads you back to the ancient truth about those real people who practice the laws of nature. So I hope you guys can see what I'm showing you here, how the deception is achieved and how we end up the way we are today. Now let's move on. I just want to show you the similarities of underwater findings that they're attributing to Atlantis. And I want to compare these findings to a lot of the ancient art and the ancient architecture and the ancient cosmology that we find throughout the earth. So what you're looking at now is another underwater finding that has been attributed to Atlantis. But if you look at this design, it's a very common design that we find in a lot of ancient cosmology. A lot of you may not be familiar with this, but since I do a lot of research on ancient cosmology, this stuff sticks out to me like a blood spatter sticks out to a detective. And I see the deception so clearly. Now, what you're looking at is a curtain style type setting here. And this curtain style type setting is attached to four columns that's creating a outer perimeter. And it's similar to like a stage or old school beds that you've been in before that had the four columns sticking up around the headboard around the bed with the bed enclosed and like a curtain. And this is cosmology. I've showed you guys this same concept plenty of times. I showed you on a five dice. We're going to stare at this picture and you can see in the bottom right, this was presented by the Neptune Society. And this society do a lot of research about Atlantis. And look at their name, guys. They're called the Neptune Society. Now you see the deception. They're giving this ancient science to their Greek deities. And this stuff does not belong to Neptune. Has nothing to do with Greek mythology. This is ancient, original, natural science. And I'm going to show you that right now. So this same concept you're looking at what the Neptune Society found and they attributed to this mythological city. It's the same concept of the four corners creating the center fifth peak. I went over this in the previous video. So if you guys watch those, you're going to know what I'm talking about here. These four columns create a center peak here in this picture. Think of a five dice. Here's your five dice right here. Think of each corner right here on this five dice think of it if it was attached to that middle dot and a curtain was hanging and each one was attached to that middle dot it would be the same thing we see here in this photo presented by the neptune society but why am i bringing this up because this concept is ancient cosmology and now we're going to compare this photo to this ancient mesopotamian cosmos and you can see here it is the same thing. You're looking at the mother God is in the middle. You're looking at her arms raised holding up the curtain. And you can see where her legs coil up and form the top of the curtain where that center peak would be where those four corners or those four columns would meet to form that fifth peak. You're looking at the same concept here in this ancient Mesopotamian cosmos. And if it's hard for some of you to see, what we'll do is flip back to this picture here of the Neptune Society. Now let's flip to this House of Judah coin, which is ancient Kushite cosmology. You can see it's the same curtain type setup here that we find underwater. And they are attributing this to Atlantis. But I'm showing you that this is very ancient common practice here. So in this House of Judah coin, we see the same concept. And this is just the Sumerian universe. You can see its layout is very similar to the House of Judah coin, which is very similar to this underwater finding. And there's a lot of more of this type art we find in other places. If it's not stolen from ancient cosmology, it's stolen from ancient sciences, but you can't separate the two. 
everything the ancients did was as above, so below. As within, so without. So keep this concept in mind. I want y'all to look at this picture some more. Again, it was presented by the Neptune Society. Keep the concept in mind just to make it simple for you. Remember, four corners with one dot in the middle. Think of the top of that five dice. This is Hindu cosmology. You're going to need this concept in your mind to decode the rest of this deception. This picture you are looking at is another depiction of the city of Atlantis. And what I want to point out about this picture is that it was done by the world's leading Atlantis expert. This guy's supposed to be number one in Atlantis knowledge. And he presented this picture. Now, remember what I told you, the four corners and the center peak. And look at this picture. Don't we see this concept present here? We see the four corners and we see the center peak. And not only that, we see an entrance on the left here going into the city. A straight entrance just like we see in Anchor Wat. Lock this depiction in your mind because what we're going to do now is flip back over to Anchor Wat. And as you can see here, it's the same thing. People, how can there be a lost city that just vanished? That's called Atlantis. That's made after their Greek deities. Nobody can find it, just like the Ark of the Covenant. And somehow it's made the same way that we find in Anchor Wat. The stupidity of the whole situation is that you will have so-called conscious people that are come and argue with Brother Sanchez. They'll say, Atlantis is real. What you talking about? And guess what, guys? They have no proof. They can't show me nothing but this drawing that Atlantis is real. When I can show them real pictures of Anchor Wat, and they would still stand up there and argue with me. And I can show them real pictures of Anchor Wat, and then flip back here to their fake pictures. That's draw that was given to them by deceivers. And they'll keep arguing with me about Atlantis while ignoring these real pictures that I'm showing you of Anchor Wat. How can we still hold to the fact that this drawing is true and that this place really exists when I'm showing you the real geographic city called Anchor Wat where this drawing was stolen from? But you still would give this guy credit and say he's not lying. Atlantis is real. And you will empower the elites and empower our enemy and empower the liars. And our kids won't know nothing about the secrets of this real city called Anchor Wat. And before long, they'll been a took bulldozers into the city, just like they tearing up the pyramids and everything to hide the truth. So now all of your children going to be left with in the far future is drawings. And what's going to be the story behind these drawings is lies about Greek gods and they will never know the truth about the mother. And this is a big attack on mother nature. The truth about how we need to treat this planet and carry on is in the cosmology. That's why we destroy the place because everybody got these patriarchal deities at the root of their ideologies. Even the comedic folks walk around here talking about we from Atlantis. All of this knowledge don't produce any progress. It produces ego because that's what's associated with the Greek deities. Now, again, this is just a drawing. But many people will look at this real city of Anchor Wat and argue with me and ignore the truth when I'm showing you the real city and you would accept the drawing like a fool. I'm going to try not to get so worked up. Remember our concept, four corners, one center peak. This is Hindu cosmology that they are giving you for the city of Atlantis. Here's another picture right here. It's not too different. This one was done by Marathi or some guy, but they're all just drawing Anchor Wat. They drawing the Hindu cosmos, presenting it as Atlantis, and we're accepting it. And what makes me scratch my head is like how we can't see the similarity. Where it's lost, we can't see these similarities that they're giving us the same stuff. To drive all of this home, keeping the concept in mind of the four corners and the center dot, what you are looking at now is actually Bronze Age art done by what's called the Sea People. Remember that the Sea People are nothing but the people who practice the sciences of the Mother Goddess. 
there was a black group of people called the New Wapians under a leader called Dr. York. And I'll be doing a video in the future on Dr. York and the New Wapians. They took this science. Anyway, when you say New Wapian, the root word of New Wapian or New Wapian is New Wa. And that goes back to the ancient Chinese mother goddess, Nuwa, that I taught about in my comedic cosmology videos. This Nuwa goddess is the primordial waters that I keep speaking of. This is the ancient Asians, how they spoke of the primordial water goddess. They call her Nuwa and they gave her a serpent tail. All of the serpent knowledge and all of that come from the Asiatic cultures who were saying the same thing all of the other ancients were saying in their own way. To make a long story short, we have to keep that Nuwa root in mind because when you hear stuff like sea people, this is who they're talking about. Nubians or Nuwabians are nothing but people who practice the science of the sky goddess Nut. She descended from the primordial waters of the goddess Nu, the original mother goddess. And Wa is simply water. These are water gods and water deities because it started from water this all is associated with atlantis and why it's associated with being lost under the water and why neptune is the god of the water all of these parallels are for a reason and the symbolism speaks directly to the subconscious you have to tie it all together so this art that you're looking at now it's the same concept of that five dice with the four corners and the center peak and I just showed you how this is nothing but what they're giving us for Atlantis. And this is the same cosmology of the Hindus and many, many other of our ancient ancestors. I beat this horse over and over on this channel of the four corners and the center peak. This is the top view of Angkor Wat and much more. So I think you guys pretty much see where I'm going here. So this is just some art here that we're comparing to those same previous concepts. Keeping this art in your mind that was done by the sea people or the people of New, the four corners and the center peak. Now we're going to transition from this picture to this picture, which is a artistic depiction of Mount Maru. And why did I go from the sea people's art into this picture? Because this is the same thing. Now let's break this art down. Right here in the middle is that center peak. Remember, we had our four corners and a tall center peak we see this concept all around okay we pretty much get it by now so let's go back to this mount maru art what we see here directly in the middle is that tall center peak and you may ask yourself well where is our four corners as you can see you have two deities to the left here and two deities to the right here and one deity that sits above that center peak that deity that's sitting in the middle of that center peak is representative of the zenith, is representative of the eye of the most high or the cosmic womb, the yoni, the singularity, the point where all emanates from. It's the center of the pyramid, which is the heart, and it's also the zenith or that top peak because that's where all the energy from the base of the pyramid climax and forms this point of the pyramid the base of a pyramid may be miles and miles of cross but all of that energy reach a center peak that's very very small a very small peak so all of that energy climax at the peak the peak can be represented of the pole this pole is represented of this center deity this center deity would be the goddess new with her back arch that we see in the comedic cosmos this would be the deity that holds up the cosmos. Remember, the queen bee and the mother is always at the heart or the center. So that's what we're looking at here. And again, your four corners or your four foundations is represented on the four deities that we see surrounding this center deity. Two on the left, two on the right. It's always going to be balanced because ma'at is balanced. So when you look at this, it's also a balance scale also. You can look at the deity in the middle as being Ma'at, and you can look at each sets of deity on either side as a wing or a balance scale. 
the same thing we have on the left side, we have on the right side, it mirrors itself. That's balance. And this center deity is basically balancing the scales of ma'at. This is the same concept. So we see all of the concepts here in this simple piece of art. Most people will look at this and they would miss all of this. They won't even know that they're dealing with cosmology in this Hindu art. So our ancestors looked at our world in a very beautiful artistic way. And when you look at pictures like this, it should warm you up and give you back a little sense of awe to the place. We have to regain our sense of awe about reality because this is what happens when you walk outside and you see a beautiful rainbow and a waterfall and it's not awesome to you anymore. We've evolved to such a state of doom where nothing excites us anymore. Being out in nature is not an option. We prefer to play virtual reality games that have good graphics of nature as opposed to being in nature. And this is because we have become strangers to nature due to our spooky ideologies that have put in our minds today that we are separate from nature. So this is a beautiful picture of Mount Maru. Before we move on, let me just point something out at the bottom. At the very bottom, you see like a diamond shape with the square inside of it and another diamond inside of it. This is the drop box concept. This thing can be broken down into so much when we deal with sacred geometry. And I'm going to do a whole nother video on this stuff, but I just wanted to point it out and I can get you familiar with it. But think of the Dropbox. There's an Internet company called Dropbox and think of their logo and look at the Yoni symbol in this Mount Maru art at the base of this art. What we are looking at now is just another computerized depiction of Atlantis. It's surrounded by snow, as you can see, and it has Mount Maru as this glowing like purple little thing i don't know what it is but what i want to point out about it is if you look at it it's simply a circle with an x or what some would call a cross in the middle of it an x is a cross guys depending on how you're looking at it it can be either or to the viewer so get out of the this or that mentality and see holistic back to this picture the circle with the x or the cross in the middle of it became the bull's eye. Remember what I told you about the crosshairs of the bull's eye? X marks the spot because the center of the earth is where the umbilical cord, where the mother is feeding us. Remember that center peak. I shouldn't have to go too deep with this when we understand, when we look at this depiction, that we see the symbol that's used for the divine intersection or the sacred intersection. Basically, when you draw a circle and put a so a cross in the middle of it this is showing how all energy emanates from the center so if i go back to this hindu cosmology i showed you earlier here with these six deities surrounding it you can see the concept here you can see the circle and the square and that's the equivalent of this drawing here that they've given us for atlantis because this x or the cross is also the square and the circle if you take a square and trace the corners, you get the X. It's the same symbol. And the circle and the square represents 360. They both represent zero. Zero doesn't mean nothing. Zero represents 360, the continuum. Back to this depiction, you also know there's a store called Target. And they have this for their logo as well. Why do we call this the bull's eye, the Target? Why is it the bull's eye? Because the bull is Hathor. And remember, the cosmic eye is the cosmic womb. That's the bull's eye. The bull is the mother goddess. So, yes, that's the goddess's eye. You see it on the dollar bill also at the top of the pyramid. You see the eye of the most high that they want to tell you is the eye of the devil, the eye of the Illuminati, because that leads you to where? Spookism. What kind of knowledge do you get from spookism? If I tell you that that eye is the eye of the mother goddess and you ask me, well, what is the mother goddess? Now I can start telling you about the awesomeness of the earth and how everything's worked with our cosmos and how awesome mother nature is. As opposed to me saying, well, that eye is a reptilian eye. That's the devil. 
but yet you still got a pocket full of money with the devil lot. So what good is the spookism going to help us? So what I'm saying is let's get out of all of the dumb talk and the dumb communities with the stupid talk. I was a victim in it too, but that's not learning. That's being entertained. It's the equivalent of watching a scary movie. You're going to be entertained. They've conditioned us to be addicted to fear. Fear is a chemical, people. Understand that these people are playing with your biology. In these comedic communities, you get a bunch of reptilian lizard talk, space talk that sounds like a Star Wars movie. And you come to Brother Sanchez TV and you get nature. You get having respect for one another. See, what I teach is the hardest thing to do. The hardest thing to do for humanity at this time is simply to love one another, preserve nature, and to be the true earth creatures that we are in this magical place. First thing we got to do is realize we divided and conquered and become united before we can do anything. So how do we become united? We become united under what we have in common. And the earth is what we all have in common. We got to share the same water and air. Our kids got to inherit the same place. So if we can't get past our differences for that cause, then we are truly barbaric. And we can't call ourselves conscious without being willing to sacrifice for a greater cause. We have been deceived by imposters who want to destroy our lovely planetarium that was created by our awesome mother goddess. They have been destroying it now for centuries and we're living in a wasteland now. We can still see the beauty of what was a heaven. Lock this picture in your head. We're just going to make a few comparisons. We're going to compare this depiction to this layout right here. And this has all of your captions around it to kind of give you a layout of the city. But as you can see, it's surrounded by water. Then you meet land and you can see there's a series of canals that's feeding the water here into the city. Now, this is what Plato wrote, as you can see there in the caption. This is what Plato said that he saw, but when nobody else around to confirm it. Now I'm finna blow y'all mind. OK, keep this picture in your head what you're looking at. Because now we're going to flip to this. And this is an actual picture of Angkor Wat. Keep that picture in your mind what Plato just said he saw. Why are these things so similar? Remember, the square and the circle are both the 360. What you are looking at in Plato's depiction is nothing but another layout of Angkor Wat. You notice that when you walk into Angkor Wat, the first thing you meet is water. And I broke this whole cosmology down as above so below how this tied to our cosmology i did this on the previous videos anybody familiar with the cosmology can see that plato was a liar they can see that plato plagiarized real ancient architecture stole it and used it to shed validity and to give power to greek mythology again we got to free our mind people Plato gave y'all the layout of Angkor Wat. He basically gave y'all Angkor Wat's building plans and told you this is Atlantis. And nobody compared the two to say, hey, this is BS. And if you think I'm lying, let's just look at some more comparisons here. We see Angkor Wat here and flipping back to Plato's depiction layout here. Here is a so-called satellite view of what Atlantis would look like. And this picture I put up here because this is important. This picture was presented in Spain by some kind of society. Hopefully it wasn't the Neptune Society again with they bogus behinds. But this was presented in Spain and it was put out as the lost city of Atlantis found off of Spain lost arcs. I don't know what the world Spain lost arcs are. Now, y'all can educate me on that, but basically I just brought this picture up to show you because earlier I told you guys that Atlantis is not just one location. All of these people finding underground structures, these structures have cow goddess art, bee goddess art or laying around. They finding all of this stuff under the water, flat earth evidence under the water. And how do they hide it? They hide it under spookism. See, they got the whole world excited about stuff like 
lost cities of Atlantis and its mysterious sci-fi pseudoscience. They got us so excited about it. And when they find this real underwater structures, y'all, this is real stuff. They are associating real findings to mythological places. And you know the place is mythological because I'm showing you here Atlantis that's off the coast of Spain. Come on now, how can this mythological city be in all of these different places, y'all? How can it be in all of these different places? I just showed you two different places previously, and now here go another place they saying is off the coast of Spain. Which one is it, y'all? We got to free our minds, all right? Now, here is more structures that they're finding underwater, but this one here is found around the Egyptian African area, if I'm not mistaken. This is underwater in that area off the coast of Africa. You can do your research on this yourself, but I brought it up to make a point. Look at the style. It's the tombstone design, arch type design that I've been pointing out to y'all. And this is really an ancient obituary or story of the cosmic journey. I broke this science down to y'all on previous videos. Basically just wanted to show you this because they associated it again with Atlantis. Now, this goes back to the ancient funeral practices. Like I told you, the root word of funeral is fun. Our ancestors had fun during this transitioning time. And I get deep into that in previous videos. I want to point out the symbolism associated here and show you the similarities in this particular video. So just like we can see here, funeral type architecture and structures underwater, just to prove my point that not only do we see this in Angkor Wat and Kemet, that these practices were all over prevalent and that the ancients were on the same page. Even when we find these underwater findings, we can find Hathor and again, back to this tombstone stuff like this, which shows parallels to others. This is typical funeral architecture that we find in the graveyards today. Certain people who got a lot of money, they can afford to bury themselves in these little funeral buildings. If you go to a cemetery, you'll see these rich people and stuff who bury themselves inside of these. They're used in monumental architecture, for example, like something like the Lincoln Memorial, which again is associated with death because you don't get this until you die. This was to memorialize Lincoln after he died. So this is a form of funerary practice, just like we find these in the graveyards. We find them as memorials, too, because the graveyard is a form of a human memorial. When you go to a graveyard, each tombstone is a memorial where you're going to do what? Remember or have a memory of someone. So it's all related just to drive the symbolism home with all of this, if you look at this, this is just a depiction. They have found structures like this underwater. This is a depiction, and it shows you what this structure would look like before it corroded under the water. This is a computer image of what it would look like when they put it back together. So when they go under the water and find all of the blocks and ruins, this is what you would get. And the same thing we find and anchor what now we're going to flip from this picture this is an atlantis depiction of art we would see in this mythological city of atlantis but what i'm going to do here is move from this picture to this picture and this is what's found in cambodia at anchor Wat, and this is the same concept it's a little different but you will find those type structures that we just saw all over anchor Wat, very similar so this funerary design, I'm showing you again, I'm comparing the pictures to real architecture. I'm comparing their art that they're using to support their myth and their lies to the real truth. Because when we go back to the truth, there's a different story with the truth. The story that's associated with these structures brings us back to the mother goddess and the stories that's associated with their depictions and their art takes you back to Neptune right back to Greek mythology, and you're thinking you liberated. What I'm going to do now to speed this process up before we close out is leave you guys with a brief little slide 
that's going to swap between pictures and make some more comparisons between Atlantis drawings and illustrations and actual real architecture that they are stealing these ideas from. When you look at these pictures, open your mind and see the similarities and tie in the pieces for yourself. So enjoy this slideshow. So now that we got that out the way, you guys should have a great understanding of the message I'm trying to relate to you here. Some more awesome things I want to point out to you guys. One of them being this picture you're looking at in front of you found underwater. And of course, again, they attribute all of these findings to their mythological lies. The etymology of Atlantis being Atlas and this finding being found underwater is very powerful if you ask me because what we're looking at here is an ancient atlas it would be the equivalent of the flat map they gave us all globes in school the globe is inaccurate now i went and purchased the globe and in a future video i'm going to explain why i say that those spinning globes are inaccurate because they don't portray the true reality of our cosmos what you're looking at is not Earth when you're looking at a globe. Now, when we look at this underwater finding, this shows you that the ancients were very advanced. They knew that they were on a flat plane and they knew the true reality of the cosmology. This is an instrument that we find in a lot of flat Earth communities. Some of my flat Earth brothers and sisters can help me on this one and shed some more light on this connection. I know this is very powerful that they find this instrument underwater and it's an atlas or a flat Earth instrument in Atlantis. Remember our etymology. And this proves that our ancestors weren't spinning globes. I just wanted to point out that divine parallel because I found that very awesome. The next picture we see is a sphinx. Some people call them griffins. I went over these creatures in the previous videos that I did on Anchor Wat. I broke down to you the meaning of these lions that guard the entrance to the cosmos. They guard the entrance to the temple and to the entrance of the city. All I'm doing is point out the similarities. I'm pointing out the underwater findings, the lost city of atlantis and i'm comparing them to the other findings that we see amongst ancient people abroad and the reason i'm doing this is to show you that all of these underwater findings that we are calling the lost city of atlantis are nothing but the scattered ruins and remains of ancient cultures and cities who all practice the same culture that everyone else practice on the earth we can't escape it everyone share the same science and this is why we're perishing today. They convinced the world to see this science as evil and to be estranged to nature. But back to the information in front of us. This what we find underwater is one of the lions or the sphinx that's guarded one of these ancient cities, underwater cities. Now they're attributing all of this to Atlantis. As I told you, there's multiple locations how can there be one city called Atlantis with all of these scattered locations? I don't know. What I'm telling you is that they are hiding the fact that everywhere we look, we find the same art and architecture. 
they're hiding the fact that the ancients all around the world practice this same matriarch science. And they're hiding it under this banner, under this mythological banner of Atlantis, the lost city. But these are real structures they're finding. How dare they accredit this stuff to a mythological place? We never ask these type questions, but Brother Sanchez do. So again, here we have the Sphinx found underwater. I told you that we find the Sphinx at the entrance of Angkor Wat and even at Giza and many other places. So I just wanted to point that out and we have to move on here. All of the architecture is tied up into the mother goddess who was the original architect. The root word of it is arch. The most high created the first arch in existence. The earth is made the same way of all of the structures you just saw in the slide and the same way of the house that we live in and the temples that we worship in. As above, so below. To drive all of this home, there's just a few more things we need to point out before we close out. We know giants are associated with the lost city of Atlantis. And here is a picture of some of those giant bones that they find underwater that's associated with this lost city. Now, giants is a whole nother video. How they relate to the city of Atlantis, I basically just debunk Atlantis on this video, guys, if you're not aware of that by now. There is no Atlantis. There is no underwater city that literally exists called Atlantis. When we say Atlantis, we're talking about Atlas. And when we say Atlas, we're just talking about the flat earth. So why do when we look up pictures of Atlantis, we find ancient pictures of the ancient cosmos that they are using for this ancient mythological lost city? They can't find it and it's lost because it don't exist. People free your mind. Don't let them make a fool out of you. Back to this giants discussion, because this can lead to plenty of debates. Do I believe giants existed? I do believe giants existed. Why did I bring up giants on this Atlantis video? Even though giants may have existed, the city of Atlantis is a myth. Giants are not a myth. The reason I say giants are not a myth is because giants did not originate from mythology. The city of Atlantis did. Giants originated from ancient history and also we can find physical proof when we find these bones all around the earth. So this is something that's kind of hard to argue considering that even our ancient ancestors also spoke of giants. So that's the only reason I brought up this finding with the giants. Stay tuned for the future video on that. But the reason I brought this up is to make that point. Giants are not myth but Atlantis is. And often they use giants to support the myth of Atlantis in the same manner that I've showed you how they use in ancient cosmology, which is real stuff we can find all around the place to support this non-physical mythological place called Atlantis. So I hope y'all can see how this deception works. We know giants are real. But they will use something real like giants to support their mythological cities. So giants are not a myth, but Atlantis is. And up until now, no one have debunked Atlantis. So I hope you guys share this video to people who still believe in this lost city or have ideologies founded on fish people and the teachings of Atlantis. Pretty much the whole black conscious community need to watch this video and realize we got a lot of research to do we got a lot of requestioning to do we got a lot of ego to lose because there's a lot we don't know and we're being laughed at all right so atlantis has been officially debunked there is no lost city of atlantis keep in mind i'm the same young fella that debunked noah's ark also there is no lost ark all of this stuff they got y'all looking for, I've already found it. So explore the channel. Now let me go ahead and close this thing out. These are human sculptures of children holding hands that they found underwater. This is a very common practice called Ubuntu or Ubuntu. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But this is an African practice 
and it's basically an old unity concept a concept of unity but the unity that we find in this concept of ubuntu is a deeper kind of unity than most of us are used to so i basically put this up to show you the same african concepts they find in underwater structures but to point out to you something else the people look very modern some of the sisters in the picture have headdresses of modern style that we see today the conclusion that i came to looking at this picture is that a lot of the underwater structures we find some of them are real some of them are fake stuff that they plant there and they are really structures that they've made recently and putting it under there calling it ancient a lot of people gonna say well hold up now that's too much brother sanchez but stay with me for one minute all right keep this picture in your mind and this is a beautiful picture but what made me question the picture was when i went to this picture guys this is another picture of the same concept it's beautiful you can see the fishes swimming around it that's why i said i wish that this stone finding underwater was real because it's so magical it's so beautiful i wish that it was real we have to question a lot of the stuff that they find under the water. Some of it's real, some of it's not. I'm going to point something out to you. Check this picture out. Here's another underwater finding of people standing around like the ones we saw previously. A lot of people will look at this and you would know off the back that this is not ancient. How can we tell that these people under this water right here on these sculptures aren't ancient people? Because if you look at the bottom left there, there's a guy with sunglasses on. They didn't wear sunglasses in ancient day. Also, if you look at the bottom right, you can see a guy with a baseball cap turned to the back. And ancient people didn't wear baseball caps turned to the back. So if you look closely at this picture, you can see that these are urban sculptures that was done in our time. And they were placed under the water. Look at the features on these people. These are modern features not ancient features okay as i just pointed out to you so with that being pointed out let's just flip back to this beautiful picture of these children and we have to ask ourselves is this ancient or is this just modern art placed under the water because when i go back to what's really ancient here what's found by the neptune society and this is the curtains again the mesopotamian cosmos if you look at the blocks the columns they have where they have what is that algae forming on them and corrosion on those blocks from being under the water so long you can tell the difference of the material how the corrosion takes place on this structure as we compare it to these children it's a totally different type of corrosion proving that these children aren't ancient structures and even if we go to these underwater pyramids that's found off the shore of Cuba if we go back to these you can see this is a different type of corrosion and this type of corrosion that happens under the water we're very familiar with it but we wouldn't question it at first glance without the comparisons that's why when I go back to this picture of these children under the water we don't see that type of corrosion this proves that this was planted there and it's not ancient and I just wanted to do that before we close this out because I showed you guys the truth about Atlantis in this video, but I also wanted to leave you with that. So when you continue and do your own research, if you're doing any research on underwater ancient cities, you know what to look for. Look for certain type corrosion so that you know you're not being bamboozled. All right. We have to become investigators in order to get the truth. We have to use our mind. No one's going to use it for you. And that's the mistake that we make in a lot of communities. So as I close this thing out, keep in mind what I said. This has been an extensive video, so I'm going to let you guys go. If you would like me to do a part two on this Atlantis thing, because I do have some more material on it. If you want me to go more into Atlantis, let me know. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. New uploads every Thursday. Peace, 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 peace and much, and much love. love.